please rise for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for our national anthem and the presentation of colors. Please be seated. Welcome to the wreath laying ceremony of the National Guard Global War on Terror Fallen Warrior Memorial. Our official party for today's ceremony is Major General Janine Burkhead, Adjutant General Maryland National Guard, Brigadier General Andrew W. Collins, the Deputy Adjutant General, Brigadier General Drew Dougherty, Assistant Adjutant General Air. Joining our official party on stage is our special guest speaker, Dr. James A. Dula, Veteran Affairs Officer for Prince George's County and United States Air Force Veteran. We are honored to be joined by the fam families of our fallen warriors to include the family of Staff Sergeant Kenneth Cropper. We are also joined by Maryland State Senator Ben Brooks, Maryland State Senator Arthur Ellis, Maryland State Senator Ron Watson, Maryland State Delegate Nino Mangione, Maryland State Delegate Cheryl Pasture, Carroll County Commissioner Ed Rothstein, Jessica Claytman, Regional Director for Senator Chris Van Hollen, 
Maryland Department of Veterans Affairs Special Advisor, Bob Finn. Brigadier General, Amy Crimser, Director, Joint Staff. Major General Retired, Grant Hayden. Brigadier General Retired, Sean Casey. And members of the Maryland National Guard General Staff, Brigade Commanders, Command Sergeants Major, and members of American Legion Post 200. Thank you for attending today's ceremony. Please rise as Chaplain Wortham offers our invocation and remain standing as we honor our fallen warriors. As we remember the fallen, I ask you to consider a passage from the sacred text. Greater love hath no man than this than to lay down his life for a friend. Let us remember the fallen this morning, but let us also remember the family that remains. Let's give thanks. Gracious and eternal God, we come to you recognizing that you are the great I am. Recognizing that freedom is fought for and won through the lives that are laid down and the blood that was shed. And we thank you for the opportunity to be free. We ask, dear Lord, that you would bless our time together. We pray for strength and courage to remember the fallen. We pray, dear Lord, that you would give us words of affirmation for the family that is here to honor their loved one. We stand shoulder to shoulder remembering that together we are better. We look to you putting our hope, our trust, and our peace in you. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you, Chaplain Wortham. Today, we remember the following Maryland National Guard members who died while mobilized in support of the global war on terror and the heroic act of an individual's bravery. Chief Warrant Officer 4, William Ruth, 11 September 2001, from injury sustained at the Pentagon, Arlington, Virginia. Staff Sergeant Kenneth Cropper, 20 March 2002, while serving at Fort Myer, Virginia, in response to the September 11th attacks on the Pentagon. Private First Class, Carlton Newman, 3 March 2005, while serving at Fort Stewart, Georgia. Corporal Samuel Boswell, 14 October 2005, for injuries sustained in Al Taji, Iraq. CO, 14 October 2005, from injuries sustained in Al Taji, Iraq. <laughs> Sergeant 
Sergeant Brian Connor, 14 October 2005, from injury sustained in Al Taji, Iraq. Staff Sergeant Michael McMullen, 10 January 2006, from wounds sustained in Ramadi, Iraq. Command Sergeant Major Roger Haller, 20 January 2007, from wounds sustained in Baghdad, Iraq. Sergeant First Class, Colin Bowen, 14 March, 2008, from wounds sustained in Khos Province, Afghanistan. Sergeant First Class, William B. Woods, 16 August, 2009, from wounds sustained in Ghazni, Afghanistan. Staff Sergeant Matthew A. Pacino, 23 November 2009, from wounds sustained in Pashe Kala, Afghanistan. Major Robert J. Marchanti II, 25 February 2012, from wounds sustained in Kabul, Afghanistan. Staff Sergeant Edison A. Hermond, Jr., 29 May 2018, for giving his life in an act of valor to save a civilian during a flood. Please be seated. It is my honor to introduce Major General Janine Burkhead, the Adjutant General for Maryland National Guard. To the families of our fallen warriors, I welcome you this morning. To our distinguished guests, our fellow soldiers, Thank you for joining us in solidarity with the family members and friends today. I lost my mother two years, three months, three weeks, three days ago, and her loss affects me every day. That pain in my gut. But I cannot imagine the pain of losing a child. I cannot fully understand the pain of losing a brother, a sister, a spouse, a friend, a lifelong partner. I am all too aware that when they sacrifice their lives, 
you lost some of your happiness as well. Today we gather with heavy hearts and deep gratitude to honor the memory of 13 brave soldiers from Maryland who made the ultimate sacrifice for us. We pause to reflect on their courage, their dedication, and their selfless sense of duty. Together, we pause to remember how they lived and how they loved. You remember them as children, as siblings, as partners, as parents, living full lives, bringing joy and frustration and laughter and tears at times. We all remember their contribution to the Maryland community and their private lives as a coach, as a teacher, as a mentor, as a neighbor, as a classmate, as a firefighter, as a role model to all of us. And we in the Maryland National Guard remember them as trusted, honorable colleagues and teammates. They stood shoulder to shoulder with us in time of need against terrorism, against foreign aggression, for our security, and for our safety in Maryland and abroad. And they stood to care for our fellow citizens in time of need. Throughout their military service, they showed us the very best of what it means to serve and to be Maryland strong. They joked and encouraged and trained their colleagues, showing values of loyalty, honor, and selflessness. They for, will forever be our role models. To the family and friends of our fallen warriors, we honor your strength and resiliency for continuing to support. As you live your lives without that fallen warrior, I wish you to know that our sacrifice, our sacrifice is your sacrifice. And they leave an indelible mark on the community in our hearts. The Cropper family, I am personally grateful for you to continue to choose to spend your day with us for just a little bit of time to share with us and to remember your fallen one. In the spirit of remembrance and reverence, it's my honor to introduce the next speaker, a person whose life and work embody the values we hold dear. Our speaker today has dedicated himself to serving veterans. Dr. James A. Dula currently serves as the Veteran Affairs Officer, Office of the County Executive for Prince George's County. He is a comrade at arms. He is bound by the same oath and the same mission and the same values. He served as the he serves as the serves with the largest number of veterans serves to support the largest number of veterans in the state of Maryland and is responsible for the health morale and welfare of all veterans and their families. He's also a retired educator, former college professor, former president and CEO of Prince George's County Chamber of Commerce, and former deputy chief administrative officer for Health and Human Services for Prince George's County. During the, milli, during the many years of his service as a Vietnam veteran, he also served two tours of duty at the Pentagon in the Office of Air Force Intelligence during the Cold War. Additionally, Dr. Dula served as Director of Administration for Air Force District of Washington and as Headquarters Squadron Commander for the 89th Military Air Force Airlift Wing Presidential and Special Air Missions on Andrews Air Force Base. At Howard Air Base in Panama, he served as an Air Force representative on the Panama Canal Transition Team and served as an Air Force Joint Task Force Commander in Suriname, South America. Retiring from the Air Force, he continued to contribute to his community. Dr. Dula received international who's who recognition and has been recognized on three different occasions for his education and leadership acumen. Among his military awards are the Joint Service Commendation Medal, the Meritorious Service Award, Commendation Medals for Service, Air Force Achievement Medal, Vietnam Service Medal, and Vietnam Campaign Medal. Dr. Dula consistently demonstrates a commitment to service and leadership, and he is truly inspiring. Please join me in welcoming our fellow veteran, our fellow Marylander, a fellow leader, a fellow community activist, Dr. James A. Dula, U.S. Air Force, retired. Thank you.
Well, good morning. good morning. What a beautiful day in Maryland. I often wake up and uh, say to myself, it's just a great day to be a veteran in, in the state of Maryland and gorgeous Prince George's County. <laughs> to the families, I want to say that you have always been in my heart. Regardless where I served around the world or what my mission was, I always knew that the heartbeat of the military was that of the family. And so today, I tip my hat to you and uh, say to you that you will always be remembered in Prince George's County and I'm sure throughout the state of Maryland, as well as the United States of America. You know, I'm a historian, so oftentimes I have to connect the dots. And normally I start with that day that will live in infamy because oftentimes we have someone from the World War II generation joining us, whether it's a veteran now in their hundreds or a family member. And we thank them too for the fight they fought throughout the Pacific where my father was in the Navy, going throughout the Pacific on Navy boats to deliver food and ammunition to the soldiers and sailors and airmen who were fighting the battle throughout the Pacific in the Marshall Islands and New Guinea and other places. I think about my uncles who, uncles who served also in World War II and then had to come back home and rejoin the family. And I often say that the military can prepare you for many things. But one of the things they can't prepare you for is that return home. From the World War II generation through Korea and fighting on mountaintops in unbelievable cold weather against the Chinese and the communists, we honor our Korean War veterans and their families who will also not be forgotten. Because we stand on the shoulders of those brave men and women who guarded our democracy and ensured that it would continue to be here for us to enjoy today. We stand on their shoulders from Korea as we entered into the Vietnam War. I am a Vietnam War veteran and I deal with Vietnam War veterans every day. And I deal with the families of Vietnam War veterans who lost their loved ones over in places like the Hanoi Trail, Da Nang, Saigon, words we were not used to uttering back during that time frame. But yet we had young men and women raise their hands and swear to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic, and to bear true faith and allegiance to the same. The same oath that you took, and the same oath that our fallen warriors took, realizing that their deaths would not be in vain. And we moved forward from Vietnam to post 9-11, when the guard once again rose to the occasion, along with the active duty forces, to say not on our land, not on our territory. And you raised your hand once again to defend our Constitution along with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We will never forget those who gave their lives in the line of duty to ensure that we continue to grow and prosper as a nation so that we could leave it just a little bit better for our future, for our posterity. And to our families, once again, you will never be forgotten in Prince George's County and in the state of Maryland. As a matter of fact, we created a new slogan that adds to an old slogan that says, no one left out, no one left behind, and no one left alone. So to our families, you are not 
going to be left alone. You will always be in our hearts, minds, and our prayers, for you have paid a dear price, and now we want to serve you. So in Prince George's County, what we have done to ensure that we continue to serve you is we created the Military Veterans and Family Center because the time was right. Military and Veterans Family Center. Because we always talk about it takes a team. It all, we always talk about we must work together to accomplish any goal. So therefore, our joint word, our, our key word is jointness. And I know you use jointness every day. And in my office, what we have created is two offices to make sure that our families are not left out. The one is a surviving spouse family that is administered by the spouse of a Vietnam veteran who came home only to pass away later from the effects of Agent Orange. And she runs that list every day, making phone calls, taking new calls every day from spouses who have lost their loved ones, from the men and women who are looking for that, that, that hand to help them move forward and for a prayer to let them know that they are still part of our family. And we, we created the Warm Hearts call list, a call list that includes nearly 100 people since last year. And that list is simply to do this. Make sure you stay in touch with our families. Make sure you stay in touch with our veterans who are now homebound and sick and homeless and in need of health care, employment, those things that contribute to their longevity and civilian life. We make those phone calls because we don't want anyone to feel left out or left alone. And we receive accolades every day from those that we help because it does make a difference in the life of someone. And we're receiving more and more calls every day. And I was uh, speaking with uh, General Burkhead last week. And I said, you know, we may serve the Army, the Marines, the Navy, the AIM High Air Force. Oh, I'm sorry, I just embellished that a bit. The Air Force, the Coast Guard, the Space Force. But we also are now serving the Reserves and the, and the National Guard. Why? Because you have always been our nation's guardians. And when, do, when times called for you to raise your right hand and volunteer to run toward battle and and, and, and not march away from it. You joined the fight. So we are more than proud to serve the families of our fallen heroes of the National Guard. We are more than happy to serve our National Guard members. And we are more than happy to say jointly, we will continue to make a difference right here in the state of Maryland because we work together and we serve this nation this nation, one God, under this nation, with liberty and justice for everyone, we serve together. And so we look forward to continuing to stay in touch with you and to interacting with you. And I really appreciate being asked to come here today because families will remain near and dear to our mission and near and dear to our heart. So we're sorry for your loss. But at the same time, we're here to serve you. Call on us anytime. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Dula. Please rise and remain standing for the rendering of honors. The official party, led by Major General Burkhead, will now place a wreath at the monument to honor our fallen warriors.
Hart. Hunter guard. Up. Ready. Down. Ready. Up. Present. Order out. About face. Forward. Captain Wortham will now offer our benediction. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we depart this sacred ceremony, I pray that we would leave mirroring the confidence, the commitment, the courage of the fallen. Help us to stand for truth. Help us to stand for justice. Help us to fulfill our oaths and our duties with proud and sincere hearts. As we leave, I pray that we all go back to our respective homes safely. I pray that you would watch over these families. And I pray, dear Lord, that today we have given you glory, honor, and praise. In your holy name, amen. Please remain standing for the departure of the official party. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. F please feel free to visit the memorial to reflect on the service and sacrifice of our fallen warriors and their families. There will be a light reception on the Camp Frederick Armory drill floor immediately following the ceremony. Thank you again for joining us today.